Hey, today I'm mounting some bindings on some skis. They are Fritchie Diamer Scout 11s. There we go, Scout 11. And they're about the lightest frame binding you can get. And they are going on some K2s. Toss back 88s, super light, just over 1100 grams each. Pretty awesome skis, they apparently perform well on decent, on light snow, bad snow for a light ski, it's pretty good. So, here we go. Now these bindings were hard to get at this time of year. Lucky me, they set them without one screw, so we gotta figure that out. We have a, some other screws we can modify. Fortunately, these bindings don't need the countersink kit, actually. The way they fit at the back, it's hard to see. There's a fair bit of clearance, so I could countersink them, I don't have to. We'll see how it goes. So the first thing we're going to do is set these up to fit the boots. And then we'll line up the binding. We're going to look at the midsole mark there. The midsole here on the ski. And once we have the boot fit to the binding, we'll know where to put the binding. And this particular ski has some metal plates in there, so that's handy. Take a look at the boot here. You can see right here, where is it? 300 millimeters, so we get a starting point and then we'll do the adjustments for height and release after that. The adjustment's easy. You can even say the length on the back for you, so it's real easy to adjust. You see that? There are the length markings. Okay, so our fit looks good. Height looks okay. You just got a wee little gap in there. You can just slide some paper through there. The back is perfect. That was, that was a very accurate fitting. We got the din. Ooh, six. That's low. All right. So here I've got the boots set up in the binding and the binding set up in the right location on the ski. If we take a look here, we see the center mark on the ski. And if we look up here, we have the center mark on the boot. So we know that this is the exact right location for this boot on this ski, according to the manufacturer of the ski. So now that we have the binding in the right location on the ski longitudinally, we know where to mark the holes for the longitudinal location. And then for the transverse location, I just equal it. So it's uh, equal distance from either side of the ski, from either edge of the ski. Okay, we've got our holes marked out here and there. We can see they're centered. And it's been measured on both sides if they're the same. If we take a look at the ski here, we see drill size, 4.1 millimeter diameter. We have four, that's good enough. And we're gonna start with a little one. It's a pilot hole so that we can get it centered. And then we see max depth, 9.5 millimeters. In fact, we can see here, we need much less, about seven, eight. And what we'll do about nine, so there's a little gap at the bottom, we'll fill with epoxy. Now I'm just in a garage at a cabin here, so I don't really have any tools. I don't even have tape, no drill stops, but I do have some Teflon tape, so that's my guide. To set my depth, make sure I don't go too far. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to show the camera for this. <laughs> so there we have our depth stop, ready to go. This looks spot on. Lines up, we'll continue. No mistakes yet. Still at nine millimeters. Okay, so far so good. Two more, back to our little drill. Let's check its uh, depth again. Okay, we drilled the other one now. We just took the marks on the first ski, lined them up with the second one, and uh, checked on the binding and drilled. Now we're just gonna make sure 
that we don't strip the surface off and delaminate anything while we're threading the screws in. So we just take a bigger bit, I'm using 8 mil, and we're just going to clean up the tops, tamper sink a little bit. A little trick I like to do is just put the drill in reverse, then you can't worry, you don't have to worry about going in too far. Okay, so all the holes are drilled, we're ready to put the screws in. Now because of this metal plate, front and back, you're supposed to uh, use a tap to pre-thread the holes. That's not really necessary though. You can just put the screw in, put it in a couple partial turns, back it out. Put it in a couple turns, or back it out, and it'll thread itself. And there it goes. And I'll just clean that up a little bit. As the threads go in, they can lift up a few millimeters or a millimeter or so of the outer plastic cover. And you don't want that sticking up, of course, because you want the binding to sit flush, so you just cut that out with the drill. And the threads are staying pretty sharp. Not much of a problem there. And you can see it's pretty easy. Pretty well threads itself. pretty thick metal plate in there, so you have to apply a fair bit of force, but it goes pretty well. And there we go. Special Ski Tech Ski Service Shop Tap Tool. Comes with the binding. And we're ready to mount.
Okay, so here's the finished job. Bindings are mounted. Take a closer look. Here's the extra screw we were missing. Turned out I had a, a good one around I could use. It wasn't countersink, so you can see it sticks up a little bit, which isn't necessarily ideal, but it turns out it doesn't matter. When you stick this down, you can see there's the clearance. There's a lot of space back there, so I can really stick whatever I want in. And those screws are epoxied in. You can see a little bit extra squeezed out there. I don't want any water getting in the wood. These ones we took out already and had a few hard runs on, so they're working really well. And yeah, that's the job. Now the only issue I had with these skis is that they have a noticeable speed limit, and it's slower than I would like, but I don't want to break my neck. It starts to get pretty unstable. We were skiing some pretty rough snow, and to be honest, these are my wife's skis. They're not for me. They're 160. They're too short. You can see they're pretty, yeah, pretty short for going quick. But other than that, they're great. They're super light. Taking them up, I was impressed how light they felt. They rode, I think, over a kilogram per ski binding skin setup than my other skis. Over a kilogram lighter, so it's definitely noticeable. Surprisingly, they only got me up one minute faster. It was 30 minutes on my other setup, 29 with these, and then I did a third run, and it was also 29 minutes up. So on short runs, it's only 350 meters, half an hour up. It only saves a minute, maybe over a full day doing you know 2,000 meters, it might make more of a difference. So that's pretty much the job. It's really quite easy. The only difficult part is making sure you get everything lined up. It's really seven screws, three in the back, two there, two there. You make sure you hit the plates. You make sure you don't drill too deep. You set your stoppers and yeah, glue them in or epoxy. And uh, that's the job, it's really easy. Don't be afraid to do it.